I am not a trained professional. Take everything you're about to hear with a grain of salt. So anyway, on to my professional opinion. Today, we've got a 1988 Jeep Comanche 2.5 liter, 4 speed. This has the wonderful AX4, and uh, today's problem is clutch master cylinder leak. Yay! How do I know? Well, because my clutch foot is usually wet with clutch fluid. I don't think that's supposed to happen. So, um, yeah. I feel like this is going to happen to everyone eventually. And uh, it's probably also explaining why I have so many electrical issues. Because it dumps all over the fuse box. And it is delightful. By delightful, I mean completely undelightful. You can see my makeshift catch pan to try to keep some of it off, but I think all that's doing is making it run down the back and, well, through the floor. You know, self-draining and all that. So, um, anyway, yeah, we're going to try to replace this uh, in as simple a way as possible and uh, as half-assed, almost backyard mechanic as possible. So, I know, I can't even do it in the backyard. This right here is our replacement. I asked people online, they said Luke. So uh, here we go, a Luke master cylinder. Yay! There really ain't much to it. There is one fitting on it, and there's a rod. Two bolts. Uh, or a bolt and a stud, I think from what I've heard. I, I see a few people saying they're snapping bolts or studs or something. Um, so we do have to be uh, mindful that one of these objects is not supposed to be removed, I think. Now we are working with brake fluid, it is hydroscopic, so uh, the less amount of time it can be exposed to the air, the better. And uh, holy shit, I filled that up um, two days ago, so I'm literally going through the entire reservoir in a day or two of driving. That is terrible. That is terrifying. Surprised I didn't get a squishy foot. I actually did get that the uh, the one night when I was driving. It started getting squishy, so I pulled over and filled it up real quick. It does self bleed. Now that brings me to a topic um, of bleeding this damn thing. So this is an internal slave cylinder, which means this is not uh, as easy a job as it could be. Because I have seen videos online where they get uh, the external kit, and it's real easy. It's your master, and it's your external, and it's your hose all in one, and you just go underneath, and you take two bolts out, and then your slave cylinder comes out, and then the rest of it's just easy peasy. Well, I ain't that easy. I mean, look. So if we come over here, um, we can see our hydraulic line. That is the brown, rusty looking thing. Goes into the transmission, and uh, that's where our issue is, is that it goes into the transmission instead of into a slave cylinder. So I think on the other side might be um, the bleeder. There we go. So that is going to be our bleeder valve for the uh, internal slave cylinder. Neat. So uh, if that fitting were to cooperate, you could loosen it up and bleed. Um, but seeing how, seeing the shape of uh, this truck, <laughs> I really don't know if I want to tempt fate with that because uh, this is my only working vehicle right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this the shittiest, fastest way possible and just let it self-bleed. Yeah, step one is to give yourself more room for work because uh, if I learned anything, trying to bullshit it and save extra five minutes is going to lead to 30 minutes or more of cursing and pain. So, uh, yeah, step one, washer bottle. There are three 8mm bolts that have to come out, including that one down there. You're going to need an extension. I only had a little quarter inch, so uh, yeah, I had to use that. Um, your hose is going to pull right out. Since this is the Comanche, there's no rear wiper, so try not to get the uh, the two confused. Actually, I don't know if that's for like rear or if that's the low washer fluid sensor, if it even has that. No, whatever. Don't get them confused. And uh, also make sure that you put the bottle um, facing up because uh, that water will just flow right on out of there um, if you don't have it standing up. So now we can uh, get a slightly better look at what we're after here. If uh, you got some kind of PP blaster or a liquid wench or, you know, any kind of WD sporty, we got uh, all three, except these were all empty. I don't know why I didn't freaking toss them, so WD was the winner. 
and uh, I walk that thing back and forth a ton of times because I want to make sure there's no snappy whatsoever. I got it to, to break free, like not even an eighth of an inch, and I went back and forth and was able to spin it a little bit, so we're looking good. Now onto this thing right here. This was a 10 millimeter. Uh, don't remember which way it had to go, but it got loose. And uh, now if I wiggle this, this should come off. So that's that whole assembly. So now we should have the, um, the bugs all over me. Jesus Christ. We should have the room to be able to actually get to all our stuff. It's one of these damn sizes. All right, sorry. 7 sixteenths. 7 sixteenths. But we can see, look real close there. See the fitting is moving, but the tube is not. That means that we are actually free here. Because if the tube was spinning with the nut, then you are going to have a really, really bad day. So luckily we got some penetration in there. Make this loosey-goosey spin. Thank fuck. Last thing I need. This, this needs to be a day job. Well, at this point, a half-day job. So they're, otherwise this job's gonna blow, not in the fun way. All right, so if we take a careful look in here, we can see that there's a nut way up there. I really don't know where to click to get this thing to focus. There we go. Yep, there's a nut up there. So I guess I'm gonna try to remove it from the back because this is probably where people have their issues. They try to take it, but if you look up there, that's definitely a stud. There's no, no head on that side. So here's my current issue. Um, I couldn't tell if that and that was a 13 mil or a half inch. Half inch seemed to fit it a little better, but I couldn't get the six point on there, so I don't know. Maybe it's the angle. Uh, but this one, I can't get to it, because even though this fitting is completely free, this hose has zero um, up and down movement from what I can tell. I can't I can't get the damn thing to even like wiggle a little bit, unless it's just stuck seated. Oh, wait, okay. But yeah, I, I still can't get the damn thing to come out. So if I can't get it to come out and move that fucking thing around, um, yeah, we're not even close to that. So I can't can't get it out to get behind there unless I had some really weird, um, like angled, some bullshit. I don't know. Holy shit! You don't even want to know what kind of freaking mechanic yoga I just did to get this stupid thing out. Because you got little angle, little angle, big angle to long angle to be able to get around the pedal and all that crap. Oh my god. Oh, and guess what? Once you get the nut a little unstuck, then this side of the freaking bolt starts spinning. So you got to figure out how to stop this thing. So it's bad enough you couldn't fit a fucking wrench in there to begin with. But now you have to stop it spinning while you're underneath the damn truck. So anyway, now that that bolt is, well, literally too long to be removed... Yeah, don't fucking forget that one when you go to reinstall this. If you fucking kidding me, I wonder if the bolt's supposed to go in from the inside. Anyway, now this part is free from the vehicle. We just have to un uh, we have to disconnect the pedal assembly. So let me go uh, dig through that real quick. Figure out how this piece of shit fucking comes out. Hopefully it's just a little clip. Yeah, it looks like there might be a cotter pin on that, and then the pin can pull out or a washer or some shit. Take a peek for me. What do you see? Yeah, it looks like cotter pin to me. I swear to fucking Satan himself developed this thing. Good lord, you want a freaking booby trap? Alright, so, yeah, it was a cotter pin. And of course, the cotter pin's been sitting in freaking clutch fluid, so the one side snapped. Okay, great, bend it, pull it out. Problem is, it's at the wrong angle to get it out, so you have to squeeze it kind of on the side and try to wiggle it best you can to get it. Okay, great. Got a plastic spacer that comes out. We got this goofy metal thing that's, uh, like, wiggly, wavy, right? Okay. And then on the pedal... Okay, you got your plastic bushing that goes through the rod on that. And guess what? When you push the freaking pin out of here, the pedal is free, right? To rotate. So, guess what fucking hammerhead does when it's free and bops you right in the fucking head when you're under there trying to do what you're trying to do? I love it. Great fucking design, people. Okay. Now that that fucking death trap is out of there, I think we can proceed with yanking this goddamn satanic bullshit out of here. Are we free? Yeah, freer than goddamn America. Let's go, baby. All right, get your fucking shitty ass out of there. No more leaky fucking clutch. You bastard. Fuck. I want to take a little detour here for a second. Um, my goal was to take the fuse panel out so that I could clean it. 
because it is literally covered in uh, fluid and shit. And I've, I've been having a lot of electrical issues. So I was really hoping I was going to be able to take this thing out and work on it. But um, it's not as modular as I was hoping for. So it looks like all these wires take a split to the left over there. But the way that you get this out, there's two Phillips head screws, one in the top corner, one in the bottom corner. And then after that is these plastic clips. These things are a bitch to get out. Um, but you have to bend it a little bit. You bend it and then it'll it'll pop off the pin. I'm sorry I can't get you uh, in here too well. The fucking clutch pedal's in my way. But anyway, uh, there's also a bolt. I'm not sure what part that bolt's holding on to. It's in the center of the outer pit. Trying to do this while the master cylinder's out because there's more room to work. But there's a quarter inch bolt that's in the center of this damn thing. So I've been trying to get this damn thing out, but I guess that, I don't know, that's sitting in something too? But the, the bolts in the middle, you can see it right in there. Um, but I don't know if that's fully loosening or what. I, I haven't looked up a single diagram for this. I was just really hoping I could take something apart and see if I could tighten up the contacts and clean them up and all that shit and, and get the fluid off, but uh, whew, I don't think this is going to be the job I thought it was going to be. <sighs> fucking, I am dripping my sweat right now. It's fucking hot out. This sucks. Alright, well anyway, I sprayed the ever-living hell out of this thing with brake clean to try to get uh, all the clutch drippies off as I could until some of the uh, fuses are now white. But uh, funny enough, I actually ordered a bunch of replacement fuses um, with this order. So I was kind of prepared for something. So uh, that's now screwed back together, and uh, we're going to get back to clutching shit. So we're going to clean up this little bushing and slide that back in to this hole. We're going to slide that in. Make sure not to forget your bolt because it can't go in otherwise. And uh, yeah, I guess we're going to take the tape off of that and... Uh, get to putting this damn thing back together. So in case you're curious, this is the new versus the old. It's just a little hole in there. And uh, well, that one looks like absolute garbage. So if you see a bunch of junk and shit in there, it shouldn't be in there. It should be a nice, round, smooth bore. Nice. Anyway, jamming time. All right, I do believe our clutch master is firmly secured. So let's go over the uh, order of operation here. So first I put this guy on and I threaded it, you know, kind of finger tight, like kind of on there a little loose just in case the, there needs to be some wiggle room. Uh, that bolt was already pre-installed and uh, all I did was slip a wrench onto it. Like so, same way we took it off. I had it slipped on there. And uh, be mindful what it's sitting against, because as you tighten it up, it's going to want to walk around. Now, uh, I'm doing this one-handed, uh, one one-manded, so uh, every time I tried to get the nut on on the inside, it was falling out. So I took a socket and just jammed it in there just enough to hold the wrench in place. And then I could get inside to do my business. Same way as before with this stupid thing and then the extender on there. So I pulled the clutch, clutch pedal forward. And then uh, when it was forward, then I could get access to the uh, the nut out there. So I'm having a hard time seeing. Come on. Yeah, that guy right up there. So then I could get to it. I hand threaded it on. And then I used this guy to send it the rest away. Um, but the first time I tried to put it on, the whole assembly was a little cockeyed. So I took it all apart and put it back together and then it was okay. And then after that was good, then I can come over and just tighten down that bottom nut. And over there, I didn't want to go too crazy because it's a stud and you're either going to break the weld or you're going to break the stud and you're not going to have a good day. So just, just try not to fuck that up. And then we can come in here with our line wrench and tighten that up firmly. 7 16 this guy right here. Okay, so now that that's all good, then you can uh, take your clamp and your uh, reservoir and uh, put that motherfucker on there. Now that is tightened up, and uh, we're just going to put some fluid in there, see what happens.
Wow, look at how clear that is. You can actually see the bottom. Holy shit. All right. Uh, I don't immediately see any bubbles, but, uh, you know, once we start pumping, I'm sure we'll see something. Okay, let's put a cap on it. Uh, the old car pin is uh, completely broke, and I just want this to be known. Everyone out there saying, oh, one of these days I'm going to need it. Well, man, when you find that drawer, man, hoo -hoo -hoo, that is a good damn feeling. Holy shit. Let's find ourselves a match and take this bad boy back to the truck. We're getting somewhere tonight. Who boy, I saved myself a whole... What do you think that cost? Ten cents? Totally worth the 20 years of storage. Noise. So here we are. Pedal assembly reassembled. Got our uh, cotter pen on there, bent around. And uh, all back to good again. So, uh, yeah, when we push the pedal, our... Uh, thingy goes in cool now i will say i've cheated and probably pushed that pedal at least to uh, probably 10 10 times maybe 15. now if you recall when we first filled it i put it up to the max line on purpose so i could keep track of our fluid and right now we are pretty close to the the min line i don't know if you can see that very slight difference in color there so the fluid is going down and uh slightly curious if the color changed no, she's still clear as day. All right, so uh, we're gonna keep pumping this until we get a pedal back. So let's play the game of how many times do we gotta push this before it's good? We're at, oh, I'll say 15, 16, 17, 18, 27, let's go check the fluid. All right, it's down to the metal ring. I'm gonna top it back up. God forbid we're low on fluid. Tell you what, I like the cap on that one a little more than the old one. Give you a slight more sense of security. 28, 29, hey, it's getting a little firmer. 30, 30. 40. All right, I will say there's definitely a little bit of um, push in there. I'm not sure if that's as much as there was before, but uh, we check our fluid level. We're still sitting around the max line. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can see a few little bubbles on the surface. You know, there's some bubbles coming out. All right, this is for the YouTubes, baby. Show me the bubbles. It's funny, I can see the camera right now, so I can watch the bubbles in real time. Wow, so this is like clutch pedal down, right? Nothing. And then when I clutch back out, that's when the bubbles usually come. So, down, up, down, up, down, up. <laughs> oh, jeez. Sucks getting old. I'm about to get myself a Charlie horse just doing this funny position. Well, I don't see any more bubbles on camera, so we might actually be good. It does feel kind of firm. All right. Thanks for helping me bleed that. Let's put a cap on that before we let all the moisture goblins in. Okay. Well, uh. I guess that's a clutch master cylinder install for you. Cool friggin' beans. Just gotta put the uh, the squirt bottle back in and uh, call it a day. I mean, night, you know, close enough. Well, anyway, our battery is reconnected because I was messing with the fuse block. Our master cylinder is looking quite nice in there. We got our uh, spray bottle bullshit back. All the tools are put away. And most importantly, got a clutch pedal again. All right. She's feeling good. Sweet. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, I guess the only thing left is to drive it now. Hooray. Anyway, that's how you have fast install a master cylinder on an internal slave AW4. Hooray. Hopefully, you learned something. It can be done, and should be done. Good luck!